The deep state does not want you to wake up. It does not want you to discover your purpose, and it does not want you to discover your spiritual potential. But in this episode, we show you how to break free. Welcome back to the Spiritual Freedom Show with Richard Lawrence, the podcast that's helping seekers of truth, spirituality, and psychic powers to discover true fulfillment. I'm Darren Ball, co-host of the show, and in this episode, you'll learn the sinister truth that goes deeper than the deep state. You'll also learn the story of someone who challenged the status quo, who defied a nation with his peaceful protests to lead millions of people to greater freedom. And finally, you'll also learn two keys that you can use to break free from this invisible prison. In this episode, Richard, the big question for today is, how do you break free from deep state conditioning? Now, if I just say a few words about this, I think just from my own experience and speaking to a lot of people who, in, who are you know, our audience here, I think deep state conditioning often feels like that invisible thing that surrounds us. Mm -hmm. And, you know, everyone kind of has a sense that it's there, but, and it's one of those things actually that, that starts us on this journey of starting to ask questions. You know, a lot of un uncomfortable questions, I think that a lot of people don't have the answers mm -hmm. to, similar to what we talked about in a past episode. And it seems that, you know, every seeker kind of intuitively knows that there's something beyond this physical world that surrounds us and they're looking for the answer. Um, something that tells us more about ourselves that the deep state doesn't really want us to know that it doesn't want us to find our purpose, that it certainly doesn't want us to awaken to our spiritual powers and our potential. Um, and the question therefore always is how do we want to, how can we break free from that? I'll also mention that on the show, we're gonna be sharing a little bit about the life of someone who I would say smashed these change and brought you know, even politicians and their unjust policies to their knees to bring about much needed change. And then we're gonna share a quote as well that's been attributed to that person, which I think um, can give a lot of inspiration to people who are trying to break free of this conditioning. Yeah. So maybe Richard, you start talking about what are we actually talking about here with deep state conditioning? What is it exactly? Well, the deep state, first of all, does exist. Mm. And I know there's a lot of conspiracy theories out there, and I'm not saying they're all true. In fact, there's quite a few that I'm pretty sure are definitely not true. <laughs> okay. Some I know are not true. Yeah, yeah. For a fact. Okay. So let's start with that. But that doesn't mean the deep state doesn't exist, or what used to be called, and was called, say, in the Ethereum Society, and some of the early transmissions that Dr. King received from mm. cosmic sources, uh, way back in the 1950s, it was then called the Silence Group. Yeah, that's a great point. And in one of the, the I mean, there were various things the Silence Group was interested in covering up. Uh, one was the true dangers of nuclear experimentation. Mm -hmm. um, another was UFOs. Um, and I've had a lot of personal experience of that. Uh, I've had a direct experience of cover up by the media. Um, I've had experiences of, of numerous kinds of cover-ups at, at, at governmental sources as well, and it's now known and it's now proven. But I think what we're trying to get at here in this show is how does this affect ordinary people? Totally, yeah. People um, who are trying to break free from the sort of mindsets we're all expected to adopt. They can vary, of course, from culture to culture and region to region, but we're programmed into certain lines of thinking and we're told what we need in life and that we're told what should satisfy us in life. Yeah. And we're also told what is true about government workings. Uh, and as I say, I have direct experience of this. And, and one happened, just to give one example only, when um, it was revealed by an exiled Soviet scientist in 1978. Mm -hmm that, uh, uh, sorry, 76, okay. I should say, 76, that a, an accident had happened in, in a nuclear establishment uh, which had caused, and I think that's the establishment of Kishtim, uh, some radioactive releases some months later, actually, into the into 58. Um, and these were detected. Now, some people had, had noted this that they'd been detected, but alone... The Ethereum Society in its journal Cosmic Voice published the fact that this was an accident in a nuclear establishment. Hey, you. And this was, um, as I say, revealed in 1976 by this Soviet scientist. I went along, I said, this proves our journal, which was is provable. It was registered with the British Museum Library. Anyone can check this out. Um, I'd just become press officer of the society then, at the age of 23, I think. And so this was like, a big scoop yeah. for us. Yeah. Um, 
the BBC did an interview with me about it. They said, "What? Well, first of all, what you're going to need is to have your facts verified by this scientist, the name of Dr. Medvedev, which I did. I, I went and found Dr. Medvedev, who was speaking at a what used to be called a polytechnic, now it would be called a university in London. Okay. And he did verify it on tape for me. I took it back to the BBC. The interviewer said to me, I'll never forget him saying, this actually proves your society is true. Hmm. And he interviewed me and he said it would be coming out on the one o'clock news, I think it was. I, on the one o'clock news, it didn't come out. I phoned up the BBC and I said I'd done, the, I'd been in the building, broadcasting house in London and recorded it. So I came earlier, such and such a, an interviewer. They said, no one of that name works here or has ever worked here. Well, we have no record of this interview. Just tall and kick. You're gone. Yeah. Wow. And it never went out. Gosh. Um, that disappeared. That was like an early, just an early indication of what goes on. I know some people find this far-fetched. One thing that used to be said to us in those days, especially in the 80s, when I really got campaigning on UFOs, mm. that you, you would be regarded as a conspiracy nutter if you even said governments lie. Mm. People now, young people especially, will find that, hard to believe but it was true just for saying the governments aren't telling you the truth people thought you were a bit weird now if you said governments are telling you the truth you'd be thought to be a bit weird Mm. it's gone complete reverse there's been big changes and that's a good thing finally just to finish that story the journal that had released this in 1976 the new scientist did publish a piece on april the 27th 1978 check it out it was a tiny little piece which they had to admit i can i'd pushed them for over a year wow. that they'd been in quotes scooped by a ufo but it never got the proper release and there's numerous other examples that if you like is on the bigger scale that's just one issue sure i mean there are, there are many reports of drug companies and that area of cover-up as well yeah that the, the you know the deep state at work but what i what how does this affect people who are spiritually inclined? Mm. It affects them because they're being programmed not to believe in their own potential. Totally. That's a great way to put it. They, yeah. they are told, oh, you can't do this, you can't mm. do that. And, and there used to be a thing in England, at least, you're either psychic or you're not, for example. Mm. You're either a healer or you're not. And Dr. King blew that out of the water himself, actually, mm. with his book, You Too Can Heal. But there are these conditionings, I'm illustrating that, even within the spiritual movement, certainly in the church, we know poor old Bruni died at the stake, and one of his beliefs was a, a, you know, populated other planets throughout the universe. Oh, Uh, I didn't know that. Yeah, that wasn't the only one, but he was burnt at the stake for his beliefs, you know, under under the auspices of the Vatican. Mm. So, and he's not the only one. So we know there's been all kinds of deep stating cover-ups yeah. uh, uh, in various areas but there's something deeper than deep state <laughs> and that's the sinister thing it's certain dark forces at work who unfortunately there are forces of light at work let me first say that mm. so this is, i don't want to be unbalanced or create unnecessary fear but one has to be aware that there are forces at work which don't want humanity to express its true spirituality yeah, I think it's an important point to bring up because, you know, the question you could have in the back of your mind is, you know, this, is, is the state of the world that we have today just the product of human nature or is there something more sinister going on with an agenda like you've described? Yeah. And I think, you know, the truth, as you say, is that there is this pernicious and very dark agenda that is going on. Mm-hmm. But if we can become aware of it and also aware of the lie that we're being fed, mm-hmm. then suddenly we're empowered to make a choice that perhaps we weren't aware that we had before. And a choice about ourselves too. Right. Because, you know, there's all kinds of conditioning. I mean... There's a whole scientific community that is anti-religion as well. Mm. Um, although I've been told by a friend of, of one of the big spokesmen for this, so that person, the, the great, the voice of anti-God, who's written books about it, actually spends a lot of time in church. So get your head around that one. <laughs> but um, you. and I'm glad he does because he needs to, yeah, frankly. But. You know, there is a, a movement to dispel these things and it plays into a materialistic agenda. I want to stress mm. that materialism is not the same thing as material things. Yeah. Material things are necessary at a certain level. They are not the answer. Mm. When you start to believe it's the answer, that's then when you become a materialist. 
So let's talk about it. That's that's a big aspect of the conditioning that everyone is subject to, right? I mean, you can call it conditioning, you can call it programming, but it's 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 believing in this lie that life is about this accumulation of things and material pleasure, and that there's nothing else beyond it. Yeah, and limiting our potential. Yes, yeah, that's the outcome. Yeah, I mean, that's why we say on the show, unlock your psychic powers, mm. and we'll tell you how, mm. and you can do it, and then you know, and other people can not believe you. Mm. They wish more fool them. But that's their problem, not yours. Yeah. You can do these things. And don't let anybody stop you. Because there's a, there's a program out to limit people. Mm. Um, and a lot of the people who push it are themselves programmed. And that's why they're pushing it. Yeah. They themselves are, you might say, victims of the same scheme. Possibly willing victims, mm. but still victims of the same scheme. Yeah. Mm. I think, yeah, there's because there's there's often um, even within this scheme, there's sort of like better places or positions you can be in within the scheme, and I think that also is a bit of a trap. Like you know, you could you could be someone who was wealthy, you could be someone who had a life of greater ease or comfort and luxury, and you might think actually you've escaped from what everyone else is being held back by, but that's still a part of the lie in the sense that you're still not free, you're still enslaved in that way. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, and. Uh, there's a wonderful uh, thing here, which is a, a journal called Cosmic Voice. Mm. And um, there's a, a, a transmission, as oh, yeah. them, which is a transmission of a channeled message by the Master Etherius, in this case, through Dr. King. And I think it was back in 1960, actually, that this was actually delivered. Uh, yes, February 1960. Um, and... He breaks it down like this. He says, you can tear a dark force wide open and break away quite easily. And he says easily. By detaching yourself from your basic delights. Some of us might not find that quite so easy, but mm. he says we can. So let's believe in that. By detaching yourself from the materialistic scheme of things. And that includes our educational system, even, mm, true. which is coloured by conditioning mm -hmm. and and that which is deeper than deep state we're getting here deeper than deep state when we talk about these dark forces mm. so detach yourself from your basic delights detach yourself from the materialistic scheme of things and i read on what happens you send out fear so a lot of this is caused by programmed fear mm. We feel we have to for material security, yes. for emotional security, yes. that we can't be fulfilled and we can't be happy. Oh, dear, I have to have this. I have to do that. And it's programming and it's based on fear. So you send out fear. You send out doubt by the same door. Now, doubt is an energy. This is not talking about discriminating thought okay. or analysis. This is talking about a programmed doubt, an inclination to doubt. To doubt ourselves As or to doubt... To doubt truth. I see. To doubt okay. truth that's uncomfortable. Okay. Or truth that, it, frankly, is spiritual, because we're talking about what the dark forces want. They don't want people turning to the light. Right. So you send out fear. We're going deeper than deep state now. Hmm. You send out doubt by the same door. You become a person of courage. Why? Because you are a person of light who has activated the karmic law on your behalf. Mm -hmm. So you're no longer indulging in selfishness and you're no longer cooperating with the materialistic scheme of things. You've detached from that. You might, as I said earlier, we you'll need material things to do what you need to do. Yeah. Maybe to serve you'll need it. Money can be used in service in a very effective and wonderful way. Totally. But it's being attached to the materialistic scheme of things we're talking about. So you have activated the karmic law on your behalf. You've not fallen for the trap of those who devise conditions so that you would activate the karmic law against yourself. Mm. You know, if you fall for that trap of I, me, me, mine, I want more money, I need this, I need that kind of partner. Yeah. Not because it, that's the person I love or that the person is the person I'm necessarily linked to. Or, by the way... You might be a person who doesn't need in this particular life a partner at all, but you're told that you do sure. to be fulfilled. Yeah. And you might be a person who doesn't need to have children, but you're told that you do in order to be... Now, people do break away from this, but some people do it not because it's what their, their destiny 
or their life's calling or what their higher self, their intuition is guiding them towards because what they, it's what they've been told even by parents and even by culture and whatever it is, by the system they're in, that that's what they're meant to do. And unless they do it, they won't be a properly fulfilled person. Yeah, great way to put it. So these are all things going. So they've activated the karmic law against yourself because people limit themselves through some of these things. Don't get me wrong, please. I'm not saying nobody should have children, nobody should have a partner. Have a partner myself and have a wonderful cat. <laughs> I'm not saying don't have children, but you know, obviously we're all different. Mm. And some people that might be their destiny, of course, mm. but it all depends upon your calling and your purpose in life. And sometimes if you, if you act on um, materialistic scheme of things and your basic delights, in fact, you activate the karmic law against yourself. Why is it that so many super rich, not all, but so many super rich people are not actually happy and they'll say that. Mm. They're not fulfilled and they'll say that. They should be, according to the materialistic scheme yeah. of things. Every single one of them should be totally fulfilled and happy, and yet they are not. Uh, and so and so on. We could look at other things. Sure. In, in all cases, I'm not saying none of them are, or none of them believe they are, because don't forget, a cow... Is, and this isn't came to anyone, <laughs> but a cow is very fulfilled on a nice sunny day chewing grass. Hmm. It thinks that it is. Or as I think the martyr theorist once put it, a worm is a worm because it doesn't believe it can be anything greater. Something uh, like that. Yeah. That's a, and so you can think, yeah, I've got all this. I've ticked all the boxes, so I must be fulfilled. So I am fulfilled. But, you know... I wouldn't be fulfilled chewing grass on a sunny day. Mm. I'm going to be honest about it. Mm. It's just not a name of mine. <laughs> um, so, you know, this is what I mean. So it, it's what might appear or people believe satisfies them, might not satisfy somebody else. And also their idea of fulfillment might be very limited. Totally. I think that's a great way to put it. Yeah. I mean, as, you know, I've, as, a te as we said before, I've come across people who've had real crises in their life mm. and then turn to spirituality. And although they might have an illness, they're much happier and much more fulfilled. They, their business might have crashed. They're much poorer, but they will tell me having found, because of this, perhaps more time and a spiritual element to their life, they're a much happier person. Or it might be that they were in the wrong relationship. Mm. It's, they've been perhaps badly treated in that relationship and may be deserted, and yet they feel much more fulfilled with a spiritual element to their life than they were before in the relationship. Yeah, I think it's, um, it really speaks to the fact that this, this scheme that you know has been designed as you say by these dark forces deeper than the deep state it's it is designed to ensure that we don't wake up to our potential that we don't yeah. grow in awareness such that we start to question you know the fulfillment that we may have but which yeah. is so much more limited than what we truly could have mm. if we understood what we what we really were absolutely and then the master of theorists makes this incredible promise so he says no you've activated it that's the karmic law what goes around comes around. As you sow, so shall you reap, that law. Mm. You've activated it positively and its positive rays come down unto you. Now, that's the first time I've heard about the rays of karma. Likewise. Then they might come down through the sun as energy and light, mm. but it's still the rays of karma. They come down unto you because you've activated the law positively. Mm. This is why service, actually, and that's can be the key mm. is the greatest thing of all and the great power moves and that power is yeah. kundalini but in its entirety up through the centers and it goes on and it's a wonderful promise your brain and mind become open to the forces latent within you you become all powerful all knowing now i have risen the kundalini i will say to the highest center but not in its entirety mm -hmm. so that's a promise I'm working. This is work in progress, certainly for me. And but I, what I will say, I'm more aware than ever of the need to raise it in its entirety, far more than ever I was uh, a few years ago. Mm, no, it's a wonderful insight. I think also just reflecting on what he said there and some of the commentary you've given. I mean, there are certainly elements of uh, bravery that one would need to to demonstrate. There's certainly elements of um, beginning to give, and also. 
actually experiencing for yourself unconditional love because that helps to heal, you know, this emptiness which this materialism, this scheme thrives on, you know, yeah. feeding you things and distractions and, um, you know, other material pleasures which are kind of to, to try and seek that emptiness, but it never works. And then ultimately what you described there is that the road through service is actually the way that we can truly break free. from Through service and spiritual practice, if you have those two elements in your life, you can be fully satisfied and truly fulfilled with a life that could appear to a, um, a perhaps a more materialistic person. They might look at that life and think, that's pretty empty, that's pretty tough. Mm. You seem to be working all the time. What are you doing for yourself? There's something wrong there. There's something missing. And actually, you know there isn't. They're talking about themselves. Mm. They don't realize it. Yeah. But yes, I mean, there's a great promise there. And once one breaks free from the conditioning, one can discriminate but between real needs and invented needs mm. and needs which only exist because we think they're real but when we get them we find they're not you know you can get what you want but do you want what you get that's yeah. what my wife always says yeah. to me well, that's a good question i think um someone who really epitomizes this breaking free in a, in a in a massive way um and making a difference in the world because of it um, it's a person I wanted to talk, turn to today, yeah. our spiritual icon today, and that is Mahatma Gandhi. Absolutely. And I think, you know, he's probably best known for standing against British rule in India, for, for, for campaigning for, in, for Indian sovereignty. Um, but was, what was particularly interesting about him, I'm sure everyone be aware of, his, his belief in this nonviolent form of protest. Yes. And um, it, it, it's interesting that, you know, you, you may not have imagined it, but that brought, you know, the British government to their knees. It caused them to change many of the unjust policies at the time. And... Um, you know, with his salt march, I think, and there's also the, the segregation of the untouchables that happen, and which he stood against both of those things. Mm -hmm. And, you know, what's interesting as well, given what you said, is that he was an ascetic. He was someone who turned his back on the wealth that his family had, mm -hmm. who lived a simple life, who dressed simply, who, you know, for all intents and purposes, you might think is, you know, what does this man have? And yet, he has the power to move a nation. And, and the world. Yeah, and the Changed world. the world. Yeah. And he wasn't, he broke free, he detached from the barriers of religion, which were very prevalent in Islam. Mm. There's that beautiful story about, and I never know which way it is, but let's say <laughs> yeah, a, sure. a Hindu came to him and, yeah. and there was terrible remorse because they'd killed a, a, a Muslim. Mm. And so, Master, you know, however he referred to Mahatma, what should I do about it? And Gandhi said, adopt a child of the Muslim faith. Now, it might be the other way around, but it doesn't matter for the sake sure, of the same, same And point. raise them as your own. And thereby broke down that barrier and gave a karmic methodology, really, for that person to balance their karma in the most wonderful way. Hmm. I think that, that, that point about breaking down the barrier between religions is a powerful one because we often don't necessarily think about that as part of the conditioning that's around us, but it can be used in that way. Mm. And certainly the case of Bruni that you described, it was, you know, that's that's an element of, you know, the Vatican, I think you said was... was oh yeah, they yeah. were behind that, and they're behind a lot of um, mm. killings, mm. let's face it. Uh, of people at Galileo had to be silenced. That was that was deep state working overtime. They didn't want uh, the truth about the cosmos to be known at that time. Mm. Well, I think that speaks to the quote that we've got here. It's, it's attributed to Gandhi, but it's actually uh, a man named Nicholas Klein, who was actually a trade unionist in mm. 1918 in America. And I think, you know, this is something that can be a real inspiration for anyone who is who is working not only to break free, but then to, to help others to do the yeah. same. So he says, first they ignore you, then they laugh at you, and then they attack you and want to burn you. And then they build monuments to you. Mm. That's so true. And, you know, just one example of that are the people who worked for the abolition of the slave trade. There are great, many yeah, examples, yeah, but that, great, yeah. they were ridiculed completely and they were told, you're throwing your career away, you could be uh, something else. And, you know, when I, I did English history and I do, you know, uh, uh, for, for my studies at school, for A-level and yeah. so forth in England, and we studied that particular period when the Wilberforce and the campaigners oh, yeah. were out there working for that and we weren't that didn't come into it in those days at all when i was growing you know and some of the names that we had to know canning castle ray aren't really no addington obviously people have heard of pitt and wellington sure you know the palmerston these were names that in those days everybody must have thought those people are really big figures mm. and we talked about William Blake in another episode. I mean, he was ignored completely. Yeah. And now people effectively in the art community are symbolically building monuments to him. Yes. Yeah. So it is exactly. true. And now more people will have heard of William Wilberforce, just to name one name, mm. than will have heard of those other names I mentioned totally at all. Um, you know, and that's just in my lifetime. 
So absolutely, it happens eventually, but you do get those elements. So run through them again. It was yeah. ridicule. Yeah, the first they ignore you, then they laugh at you. Yeah. That was the ridicule. And then they attack you and want to burn you. Yeah. I mean, that literally happened. You could to see the way that worked, and it literally happened yeah. to Bruni. You're yeah. right, yeah. Um, well, I think this is a great inspiration to lead to lead people on. I mean, it, it, it certainly, as I said, it speaks to um, some of the bravery that you need in order to break away, but ultimately that, you know, the true fulfillment that we can find not only in our life purpose, but in awakening to and realizing our potential can, can, can leave a lasting change in the world around us. Yeah, don't let conditioning limit you. Mm. Um, you know, and this does take some guts and there might be people in your life too, well-meaning people, might be family, might be friends, who think you're going down the wrong path and try to discourage you and you find you can't. I'm afraid you're going to have to do that thing of detachment. Detachment, I should say, is not suppression. Mm. It is detaching. If you can fully detach, it's a great promise in here of a complete and entire rise of, cosmic, of Kundalini, which means all wisdom, all knowledge, all spiritual powers, which can be used to help others. A lovely inspirational well turned on. Thank you, Richard. Thank you. So remember, the deep state wants everybody, including you, to remain their pawns, right? Ignorant and unenlightened. That's what the conditioning is for. That's what the programming is for. And if you want to break free, the key is to give service to others and to do your spiritual practices, the yoga breathing, the mantra, the meditation, the prayer, etc. Finally, do not let anybody turn you from your spiritual path because the reward is true fulfillment. All wisdom, all knowledge, all spiritual powers, which can be yours and can be used to help others. Now, if you enjoyed that episode about breaking free from conditioning, then be sure to check out this video over here that goes deeper into UFOs and the question about whether they're extraterrestrial or secret tech, or this video over here that goes deeper into the dark truth behind the global conspiracy. Thank you for tuning in. See you next time.